political matters, the hospitality industry continues to grapple with the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. And as Patronila Goren reports, cancellation of hotel bookings and revenue laws has prompted stakeholders to ditch the industry in search of other lucrative businesses. COVID-19 pandemic continues to ravage the hotel and tourism industry with stakeholders in the industry scratching their heads over their next move. Majority of employees have been greatly affected. A good number on unpaid leave while others are on half salary. We've had a little bit of business. Um, what has that done? That has really just kept the morale up. It has not paid expenses. It cannot by far pay our expenses. Um, so as a company, for example, uh, my company, uh, we've kept on 80% of our staff are still employed. Uh, yes, on reduced salaries. So, is it COVID-19 related effects pushing experienced hoteliers out of the industry? What is ailing the industry? According to the former general manager of Kilua Resort and Feisalu now runs holiday homes, the current traveler requires personalized attention which cannot be found in major hotels. I think the tourism industry is burying its, its, its head in the sand and we need, to, we need to speak the truth. I was the GM in a, in a five-star hotel. These five-star hotels that you're looking at, in my own opinion, they cannot survive three years ahead. It, it, it is clear because you cannot go and stay in a hotel and pay 25000 a night or 30000 a night. And this is the same amount of money that you'd stay in an apartment or a villa, which will take you for three, four, five days. So Airbnb, homestays, villas and apartments is what is now taking over the tourism industry in the country. The future is still uncertain, I would say, because we don't know exactly when, for example, when we are projecting now, when do we expect the recovery of tourism? Is in uh, next year is an election, and uh, we are not looking at 2022 to recover. Probably after the election, it will take gradual, probably 2024, and then you know that's a long period. So and. Uh, even uh, that one, we are not very much certain what will happen uh, after that. So probably everyone is trying to, uh, to try to project how, what is the scenario, best scenario, what is likely to be outcome. The former regional manager of Flamingo Beach Hotel by Pride Inn in Mombasa, Victor Shitaka, says the young generation travelers have become more equisite and hence exploring other avenues other than mainstream hotels. When you have uh, international tourists coming to the hotel, they want to lounge by the pool and, you know, feel the sun. And, uh, but the younger people, the younger generation who are now going out, the business people who are coming in, they come for pleasure. That's business and leisure. So the time they spend in the rooms or in the hotel has uh, reduced. They are out. They're looking for business opportunities. They're going out to meet other friends. So because there's so many alternatives, Okay, there's cottages that have come up, uh, there's uh, apartments that have come up, there's Airbnb. And because of the increase of the offers, uh, yes, this has affected the mainstream hotel. Will the conferences therefore sustain the already ailing industry? When it comes to meetings and uh, mice, so events, uh, weddings and everything, they still need the, the strength, if I may use the word, the strength of a big hotel to cater. Everybody who comes to the conference does not want to stay in the five-star hotels. They're asking for a per diem. They want to book lower hotels so that they can save. So it, 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 is, it is very tricky. No matter what you try to do, the person has got a right to, 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 to decide where they're going to stay. So you're going to pay them per, per diem, and they're going to stay in Tuapa or Nyali or in Shanzu. You cannot control it, but they will come for the meeting. So hotels' rooms will still be empty. According to Adamji, there is need for the hotel industry to become creative and adopt different modes of operations, as the preferences of some travelers have since changed, especially with COVID-19 pandemic. There will be parallel, parallel paths in tourism. The mainstream shall remain. People will come in and will want to go into a resort because that's what they're used to. And then, you know, you just have to get creative. Uh, and, and learn from other parts of the world, you know, what is some hotel in Dubai doing or some hotel in Mauritius, the Maldives. These are all countries in the world that have large inventories, you know. So are they just going to shut them down? No. 
Hotel industry key players are now worried by the trend of unregistered holiday homes, citing that if not regulated, it will immensely sink the industry into deep waters. It is unfair for all these Airbnbs, all these cottages, all these homes that are coming out, and uh, because they are not registered, they are not paying tax. Uh, and in this way, the government is forced to increase taxes to the people who want to comply. The relevant regulatory bodies in the tourism industry are now tasked with ensuring cottages and other relevant types of accommodation abide by the rules to ensure a fair playground in the hotel industry. As the debate continues on the life expectancy of the mainstream hotel industry against niche tourism, only time will tell once the tourism sector is fully back on its feet. Patronila Goren for TV47 in Mombasa County. The Lord has a